Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang! Today you're watching another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show, so we're gonna eat together and we are going to chat. So if that sounds like your thing, then don't forget to subscribe. And today, we have yet another feast. I am so excited because we are eating some spicy noodles. These are the fire noodles, guys, from Korea. I'm sure many of you have heard of fire noodles. I found these ones that were kimchi flavored fire noodles. They happen to be vegan where I live. Now with instant noodles, guys, what I found was that depending on the country that it was manufactured in and depending on the brand and so many other things, they can be vegan or not vegan. This one is accidentally vegan. So always check the ingredients list to make sure, okay? But that doesn't mean it's healthy. Okay, just putting that out there. But yes, this one is the kimchi fire noodle. So I cooked that up and I also added some vegan bacon pieces, if you can see. And then on the side here, I have some pickled radish. In Korean, it's called tammuji and we eat it with like noodles usually and other things as well. And then on the side here, I also have some seaweed rolls. In Korean, it's called kimmari, but it's basically seaweed uh, rolls that have been deep fried and inside they are stuffed with like a vermicelli noodle thing. I'm so excited to eat. We're just gonna dig right in. But first, let me drink a little something something because I know these noodles are gonna be super spicy. So I'm a little scared, so I'm gonna coat my stomach a little bit. So I'm gonna drink some of this Sprout chocolate milk. This is a chocolate pea milk and they actually sent this to me and I really like this chocolate flavor. So I have a big old glass of non-dairy chocolate milk. So I'm gonna drink some of this. Mmm, it honestly tastes just like regular chocolate milk. Mmm, delicious. All right, let's dig in. I am so excited. I'm so excited, guys. Look at this. Oh, oh. Look at that. Oh my god. I am a little concerned for my stomach. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make sure I get some of this veggie bacon as well. Mm hmm. So I've definitely had the fire noodles before, but I don't think I've ever had this kimchi flavor. I'm not sure if it's much different, but let's give it a try. First bite. Hello. Hello. Look at that. Mmm. Oh. That is an immediate kick. Mm. It is so good though. The flavors are so nice. I wonder if they make like a less spicy version of these noodles because they're so good. <laughs> A little dipping sauce here it's just like a soy sauce and vinegar mixture mm. Mm -mm. so guys how are you i was actually going to talk about the whole nikki philippi situation the drama in my mukbang but i decided to do a separate video on that so that's already up and now i'm like what do i talk about today <laughs> I'm in heaven. Ooh. This is definitely spicy. 
but it's definitely not like those like two times spicy because this brand has like one that's like double the amount of spice and that one like literally I can't enjoy it whereas this I'm actually enjoying it even though it is spicy Whew. I can actually eat it without like dying <laughs> but we'll see that was only like the first few bites and usually these are like it slowly creeps up you know what I'm saying and it's creeping up Anyway, yeah, originally I was going to talk about the whole Nikki Philippi situation with her dog, and now everyone's talking about it. If you didn't watch that video where I talked about it, I'll link that video down below. And if you guys haven't heard the story, basically it's like this YouTube couple that basically put down their dog that was otherwise a healthy dog, but it was a dog that had some aggression issues that weren't taken care of, it seems. And they recently put the dog down because they had a toddler. It's a long story, but basically they put the dog down due to these aggression issues that don't seem like they were dealt with properly. So now everyone on YouTube is freaking out about it. So I made a video kind of talking about my thoughts on it. I do think, not that I don't blame the couple because I think there's so many things that they did that I feel like would just be considered neglect. The story just seems like there was so much neglect because if they already knew that this dog supposedly had aggression issues, wouldn't you wanna somewhat take care of this before the baby comes into the picture? It just seems irresponsible to, you know, have a dog that supposedly had so many aggression issues and not properly train this dog and then instead bring in a child. Based on the stories that they tell, it seems that like they just allowed the toddler, which again, it's a toddler. I don't blame the toddler, of course, because it's a toddler, like he doesn't know any better. So they just allowed this toddler to just like, what it seems like constantly bug the dog. And to me, I'm just like, aren't you, like don't you have to watch the toddler like all the time? Maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. But anyways, here's a bite. Mm. Now I think in hindsight, after making that video, I do think, I do believe that they've gotten really bad advice also from professionals. I do believe that it happens so much more often than we know, this concept of like just putting down animals simply because they might be difficult to train. You know what I mean? Like it's not even just, oh, this is like the last resort. It's more so this is just the default. If they're difficult, because they don't want to deal with the potential liabilities and they don't want to deal with going through the hassle of training a dog because I told a little story at the end there of my video which I'll, again I'll link that video down below but where I discuss how like one of my friends fostered a dog and the dog hadn't done anything by the way like the dog hadn't actually hurt anybody she was just a young dog that had not been properly trained and she was showing a little bit some signs of aggression which i would expect like i would expect that of a dog that has been abandoned and hasn't been properly trained but instead of you know actually training this dog they the adoption agency they basically made it seem like the only option was to euthanize the dog mm. But yeah, so, and some of the comments left in that video as well. By the way, thank you so much for all the really lovely comments, um, really thoughtful comments. Some people left comments saying that, you know, they work for certain industries and a lot of people voiced that it is very common to simply euthanize dogs and other animals. No, I think this also has a little bit of spice in it. I think there's like a pepper. Anyway. So what I do think is, yes, they were showing quite a bit of neglect. And yes, I think they could have trained. But I also think that they were given a lot of that sort of generic advice from so-called professionals in this field because it happens a lot in this field where they just euthanize dogs and cats just willy-nilly. 
because maybe they don't want the liability, but it's, it's, I think it's a lot more common than we think, right? I was going through my old pictures yesterday and then I remembered this one incident because I saw pictures where I was living in London and I'm sorry if this is depressing guys <laughs> I wasn't intending on this mukbang being like kind of sad or depressing but uh, I do apologize okay anyway when I was living in London my friend slash roommate one time she came home it was a rainy night I remember this she came home and she brought a kitten with her <laughs> she came home and then there was a kitten with her and it was a rainy day and I remember being like, you, did you steal a kitten? <laughs> like what just happened? But I guess this kitten had just followed her home and came inside and we weren't sure like if this kitten had a home or not. So I was like joking around with her. I was like, did you steal someone's cat? <laughs> but when we saw her, I think it was a her. I can't remember actually. When we saw this kitten, she was really skinny. So that was like clue number one that she was a stray because she was such a skinny cat. Like she looked like a little kitten and she you could see her like bones and it was really sad. So we got her some something to eat because we were like, we can't really find, even if this cat had a home, it's kind of hard right now because it's late and it's raining and it's dark. So we'll let her sleep here for the night. We'll get her some food. I don't know what we gave her, but we definitely gave her some food. And she ate it. She ate it really quickly, I think. Yeah, and she was so cute though. She was super affectionate, like rubbed up on your leg, just like, you know, wanting constant attention. She was so adorable. So she slept over and the next day my friend took the uh, cat to I think a vet and I had to go to work so I couldn't come and to this day I really wish I went because I feel like when there's like two people you know you can kind of like stand up a little bit more like you can argue a little bit more I don't know anyway she went to the vet and unfortunately the vet basically said that a it's a stray and that she was so sick that there was no like reviving her so they had to Put her down this was like a one-year-old cat and i was very upset at that time i remember like crying about it because it was like it was upsetting you know we had bonded even if it was just for that one evening it was just to me it was shocking that they so quickly just didn't want to try my assumption is that there was no one to pay for the vet bill because this is a stray so that was my assumption i don't know on the other hand, maybe we should have taken her to the shelter. Like, I don't know. I don't know where she took her. I don't know where. I'm pretty sure it was the vet. But yeah, I was very upset about that. And that was like the first time where I realized like how easily, you know, we give up on animal lives. Yet, yeah, like imagine if that was a human. Like we wouldn't do that ever to like a human. But we give up on animal lives so quickly. Recently, I read a book. It's called The Vegetarian. And it was a Korean book that was written quite a while ago, I think. And it's actually nothing really to do with vegetarianism. Because <laughs> initially I thought, oh, it must be something about being vegetarian. But it was really nothing to do with that. It was a very interesting book, to say the least. I kind of want to reread it so I can maybe, you know, decipher some of the meanings again. Basically, one of the themes that I found really interesting in that book is that this woman 
She basically, you watch her or you read about her kind of disintegrating as a human being. First, she starts not eating meat and then she just like doesn't eat enough at all and then people around her are freaking out and it almost seems like she doesn't care if she lives or dies. And basically one of the things that happens in the book is that a lot of people around her are concerned for her like well-being because she's almost like getting to the point where she's too thin and she needs to eat more and she's not eating properly. Somebody in her family says something like, you need to eat so you can live, like you're gonna die. And then, and then the woman goes, well, what's so bad about dying? And I found that to be really interesting because with humans, we want to preserve life like at all costs. You know, we think of human life as this, you know, treasure that must be protected at all costs, even though when we're alive, so much of society doesn't protect human beings. But when you think about somebody wanting to die, we don't let that happen either. I find that to be interesting. Not that I'm saying, you know, death is good, but I'm saying like, if somebody wants to like die, I mean, ultimately, yeah, that's really sad and people around them will be really sad, but it's like, ultimately, that is technically their decision, right? I mean, again, I'm definitely not advocating for this or advocating for any sort of death or suicide or anything like that, but I just find that to be interesting that we will basically force people to live no matter what the circumstance, yet when it comes to animals, it's just like, oh, like, she's sick. Let's just put her down immediately. I do understand when the animal is at the you know end of their lives and they're really really sick they have a terminal illness and they need to go i think that you know it's something that is very compassionate that we do that we actually let them go peacefully and we let them go without you know furthering their pain i think that's something that we should do for humans as well and i've just learned that in canada we do have um physician assisted suicide that has been legal only since 2016 so it only recently became legal Whereas like before that it wasn't legal and I think in some states in the states it's legal and in some states it's not. And I know in some countries it's illegal still and people have to like travel to to get that done. Even though they are, you know, terminally ill and they are in pain and they just want to go with dignity. And yet we don't let that happen in many countries because we're human and we have to force people to live. I, I, anyway. And yet, do we care about, you know, homeless people on the street? Do we care about giving people a good life? Do we care about making sure that people are living well? Maybe some countries do, but a lot of countries don't, you know? So yeah, I found that to be interesting. If we just value animal lives half as much as we value human life, I feel like the world would be a much better place. Like I'm not even asking for people to think that animals are completely equal to us. I know that we have our biases, but at the same time, it's like, why are animal lives so disposable and human lives are supposed to be so cherished? I don't know. Ooh, last bite of the seaweed roll. This is so good. <laughs> and then there's also the concept of, the concept of being born. I remember, I don't know who I discussed this with, but I was talking philosophy with somebody years ago and somebody was like saying how there's a school of thought that says that having kids is immoral, not because of the whole, um, you know, environmental thing, but because they didn't choose to be born, so we are inflicting, not inflicting, we are forcing them to be born. So because they didn't choose to be born, we're forcing them to be born, which is inherently immoral, apparently. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> Now, I didn't look into it too much, and I'm not saying I agree with it, but I do find it interesting. I find it an interesting concept. I'm sure there's some valid points to that school of thought. I wonder if any of you guys fall into that school of thought. I 
I'm trying to think of the the arguments. It was something like, when you create life, you are inherently creating suffering because you are making somebody suffer because suffering is an inevitable part of living. So therefore, because you are creating suffering, it is immoral or something like that. That was delicious. Need more chocolate milk. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> mm. This pea milk is actually so good. Anyway, you guys, that was my mukbang. I really hope you guys enjoyed eating with me. Let me know down below your thoughts on any of the conversation we had today. And yeah, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. Whew. It's fast. It's getting to me now. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.